Assalamu alaikum. We will start today the fourth case in our uh, ECMO troubleshooting, and it's part of uh, our series from real case story. Twenty-four years old male with a history of bilateral extensive bronchitis with rapid respiratory failure, status post bilateral lung transplant with left looper loop resection. The patient is weaned from mechanical ventilation for possible extubation and we stop the sedation. Vital signs uh, almost are uh, no, no abnormal data like heart rate is 95, uh, respiratory 22, uh, blood pressure 100 over 50, Mean arterial blood pressure is 65, uh, central venous pressure 8, and oxygen saturation 92%. ECMO setting, the patient on uh, VV ECMO, peripheral cannulation, on FEMFEM uh, configuration. The arterial size, uh, arterial size uh, cannula is, uh, arterial cannula size is 18, venous cannula size is 25. Uh, the initial uh, ECMO setting, uh, RPM is 2,600, uh, 2, and the ECMO flow is 3.16, a venous pressure uh, minus uh, 50, 56, and the P2 is 145, MB3 is 120, Delta P is 24, FiO2 50, and the sweep gas is 2 liters. The patient is ventilated on pressure support, pressure support 40 and P5 and FiO2 30%. ECG strap shows sinus rhythm. There is no abnormal data in the ECG. Here the lab result, we will find that hemoglobin is uh, uh, 9.5 uh, gram per deciliter, and only uh, the, the abnormal is uh, platelet count is decreased to 92, and it's present. Uh, this is commonly occur in ECMO due to consumption of the platelet uh, in the tubes uh, and uh, in the extracorporeal uh, circulation uh, for uh, for the tubes in the oxygenator. There is some destruction, so it happens in uh, uh, commonly in ECMO patient. Chest X-ray is better, with better aeration of the both lung and good uh, aeration of the all, uh, all lung. In these uh, uh, vital signs, we will find after five minutes, we find the patient is tachycardic 120. We find the patient blood pressure hypotensive and uh, central venous pressure is dropped and even the oxygen saturation is decreased. So this patient has three parameters, tachycardia, hypotension, hypovolemia, and hypoxia. So we should start from the beginning. Uh, how to assess the patient on ECMO from the start of our uh, algorithm we I explained uh, in the previous lectures. ECG strap showing sinus tachycardia. EBG, there is respiratory acidosis, pH is 7.1 and BCO2 70, and there is a drop in hemoglobin uh, to 5. However, we see the hemoglobin before in CBC, it's 9. There is 4 gram drops in hemoglobin. After checking uh, arterial blood gas and we found a problem, we will go for checking the uh, ECMO machine and checking the circuit, checking the connection. Uh, we explained before uh, the steps of uh, how to check the circuit, the connection uh, in the wall, then from the wall to the uh, sweep gas and from the sweep gas to the oxygenator, and checking the patient uh, connection to the ECMO from the drainage cannula, then the pump oxygenator, then to the return cannula and the side of the two cannulas for the presence of uh, bleeding. And all of this should be done with bright. Uh, bright light to uh, see uh, if there is any problem or any, clo any clause in the circuit. In the checking of the ECMO circuit, we check the console. We find that the same RPM, but the flow is dropped to uh, 2 liter, and there is increase in P1 uh, to minus uh, 96. There is drop in P2 and B3, 
this drop in pressures so we should go to the next step of the circuit checking during the checking of the circuit uh, from uh, the cannula we find that there is ongoing leaking and oozing from the catheter site uh, also we find there is a sign of poor perfusion uh, there is uh, due to bleeding there is drop in hemoglobin there is uh, hypoxia decrease in oxygen saturation so this is our assessment now after checking the circuit and this is reflected on the patient signs of poor uh, bleeding presence of bleeding were reflected on tachycardia uh, dropping in blood pressure uh, dropping in hemoglobin and there is also a, a, a tachypneic the patient become more tachypneic this video shows uh, the site of bleeding. It was more uh, pre uh, more bleeding, more than that, but uh, uh, I, I took this video after uh, some controlling of uh, from the bleeding site. We manage first, we should uh, change the mode of ventilation from pressure support to pressure control. Then we should give blood product to compensate, uh, like uh, RPCs to compensate for this bleeding, and giving fluid boluses to support the drop, uh, the severe drop in blood pressure. Then we will change the ECMO setting and checking the scatter site. How do we manage to change the ECMO setting? Increase the sweep gas and FiO2. If the flow is compromised, clamp the tube, apply pressure on the scatter site. If the flow is not compromised, monitor the patient and the caster, apply pressure dressing on the site of bleeding to decrease uh, this bleeding. This nice picture shows how to put the dressing. The dressing uh, over the uh, cannula of the ECMO should be transparent, should be uh, several fixation through the suture, and uh, this is uh, uh, fixation to the cannula. Uh, from down and uh, also this is a, a many sites to fix the cannula to avoid any uh, movement or any uh, any disloc uh, dislocation or decannulation while uh, uh, while patient uh, moving his limbs. Summary of this case: We monitor the patient and caster side, applying pressure dressing, uh, and we should check every day the site of cannula insertion. Uh, monitor oxygenation and perfusion frequently and as I mentioned before if we have any problem regarding the uh, uh, oxygenation and uh, the perfusion we should put in our mind that there is a bleeding uh, is present then if the flow is compromised we should clamp the tube apply pressure on the caster side and uh, escalate the uh, backup ventilation if the flow not compromised, monitor the patient, caster side, apply dressing pressure. Thank you, and in any questions or any inquiries, we can post in the comment below.